Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Maloney. I'm joined today by Andrew Saparito, the Executive Director and CEO for the South Jersey Port Corporation. Andy, how are you doing today? Good, Abby, thanks. So we're gonna be talking about how this uh, pandemic has shaped us into a new economy, this new norm, new business strategies, new operations that will uh, continue into the future. But before we go there, I wanted to start by asking you, what are some personal norms that you started during the pandemic that you see yourself carrying into this post-pandemic world, whether it's new interests or hobbies or uh, ways of operating technologies, anything at all? Well, uh, one of the things I've really excelled at learning how to do is do a virtual meeting and uh, <laughs> also teach a lot of people how to uh, sign into a virtual meeting. Uh, you know, it's really, you know, new technology for a lot of folks. And, uh, you know, even after using it for, I would say, almost a year and a half now, you know, I'm still teaching and educating people how to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite thing. And, and how to mute. If, if so many people working at home, um, you know, with dogs barking, babies crying, um, you know, you pick up all that background. So uh, it's, it's been interesting, but uh, it's also, you know, leads to a good chuckle every now and then when you're trying to, to, to have a serious meeting and you want to tone it down a little bit. Exactly. We've all found our inner um, IT person. <laughs> exactly. You know, supply chain disruptions have been amongst the greatest challenges that have been brought on by the pandemic. From your perspective, what needs to be done from both an operational standpoint, as well as the federal level to help address these issues as quickly as possible? Uh, you know, supply chain, you know, breakdowns or issues are, are really nothing new. Um, and, and, you know, you can take it back to 2001 after 9-11 or, or, you know, labor difficulties or, or, or even a Hurricane Sandy, um, you know, which I've all, you know, lived through. And, and what you find is everybody uh, rebounds at some point in time. Um, this is more a worldwide uh, issue. So even as you, as you try to, to solve it domestically, um, as, as the pandemic spreads around, you still, you know, face with plant closures, um, you know, as far as the container industry, which we're not, you know, involved with. Um, and, 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 you know, your supply chain, everything's on the wrong side of the globe. So um, everybody's gonna work their way through it. And, you know, hopefully, you know, as, as it straightens out, the pricing comes down, which is one of the real issues today, and which is a reason why, you know, even at the Port of Camden, uh, our, our two terminals, you know, we're doing very well because a lot of uh, cargo that had traditionally been uh, shipped containers has come back to break bulk. Mm. So, um, you know, we're finding ourselves in a position where we don't have enough room right now right. to handle all the demands that are really putting us. So it's not just uh, the major ports in the country, it's the smaller ports that, uh, you know, um, you know, find themselves in a situation where, you know, in the, in the middle of summer, you, you're, you're out of space, um, which in the case of South Jersey ports always wasn't the situation. Other shifting situation is manufacturing and it's, the COVID situation has really given manufacturers the pause to think about on uh, reshoring uh, some of their operations. To what extent do you believe we'll see a legitimate surge of US-based manufacturing as a result? I don't think you're gonna see that great of a surge. And the reason why is labor supply. Uh, even now, um, everybody's having a hard time finding employees to fill slots. And, and you, you see it all throughout the logistics chain. As I, as I speak to different companies and different people, they can't hire people. So, you know, the real question is, if, if you can't, you know, staff a plant with employees, you know, why are you gonna bring it here? And, and that's a real issue that has to be dealt with. New Jersey's offshore wind industry is poised to usher in economic investment opportunities for the state as a whole, but specifically for South Jersey. How do you see continued growth of the state's a uh, green economy reshaping economic development plans and opportunities moving forward. I, I think, you know, New Jersey has been at the forefront and you have to remember all this planning happened 10, 15 years ago. So, you know, New Jersey was, you know, building, you know, a quote unquote port facility down in 
Fallsboro, New Jersey, and even before the, the agreements were put out for the offshore wind. And um, that's what kind of put us, you know, in the forefront because we have shovel ready facilities, you know, ready for the companies to come in and establish the manufacturing plants. And we toured the, uh, the beginning of the EEW uh, plant down in Fallsboro last week with the CEO and, you know, the, the concrete slab for the first building is poured, the steel is going up and that building will be, you know, basically put together uh, by the end of the year. Um, we're, we're way ahead of everybody. And with the addition of the wind port uh, down in Salem County, and what we'd like to do with uh, the port of Salem, um, we have available property now, um, and, and we're ready. And uh, it's going to continue for a fairly good period of time. So uh, very positive with the Jersey and, and where we're headed. The shipping and cargo sector has had to adapt to not only the ripple effects of the pandemic, but also adopt new technologies. In the new economy, how can digital tools help shape the future of the marine and logistics sectors? Well, you know, we were talking earlier about Zoom and, and just the virtual meetings. And, you know, we, we hold a lot of customer meetings now, you know, the, using, you know, Zoom or Teams or some other uh, platform, um, number one, to introduce ourselves to customers, but also to uh, work with our existing customers on how we're performing. So we basically, you know, have performance meetings uh, on a monthly basis with some of our customers you know, using these platforms now, um, which is something that was never done before. I mean, it may have been a conference call, but uh, that was it. So um, it really gets everybody engaged. And uh, I, I guess they, they really can look at the metrics a lot, a lot better, um, you know, what's up on the screen. So that's helped. And uh, right now we're, we're also looking at a new uh, terminal operating system hmm. because, you know, one of the things we really need to track is inventory and we want to be able to share that with our customers more, uh, more on time than uh, just generating a, a monthly report so that everybody's on track to uh, how the cargo's moving and make sure it's fluid uh, because, you know, as I said earlier, space is important. So, uh, you know, we're really trying on end to, to introduce more. And now that we find ourselves in this new economy, this new landscape, what's next for South Jersey Port Corporation? Well, one of the things that uh, we're, we're doing is uh, what we're going to call Port Vision 2030, okay. which is a, an overall master plan of our port facilities, kind of align us uh, better strategically for the future. Uh, you know, one of the things that we're learning is that, you know, we, we need more space mm. and uh, we need different types of space. Need outdoor space, indoor space. And we also need the right equipment to uh, be able to deliver the type of service that our customers look for. So uh, hopefully, you know, with this this study that will probably start uh, sometime in the first quarter of next year, um, it will be a roadmap for the port, and you know, it will be the, the tool that we use to guide us as we move forward. Great. Right. Well, thank you again. That's Andrew Saparito, the executive director and CEO for South Jersey Port Corporation. My name is Abby Malone, and you've been watching Invest Insights. Thank you again, Andy. You're welcome. Take care. Hey, everyone. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on the latest business trends from our knowledgeable experts. Be sure to check out the description below for more information on the segment you just watched. Thanks for tuning in.